Hello, welcome back. We are doing a study on spiritual warfare. In our last class we were discussing the spirit of the world, the, the things of the world that can come to captivate us and to seduce us away from our walk with the Lord. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that has to do also with the world and that is the spirit of greed, of money, and trusting money more than we trust sometimes God. The Lord Jesus said, you cannot serve God and money. They are opposites. They require different allegiance. And God demands total trust on our part to know Him, to depend on His, what He gives us, and to thank Him every day for our daily needs, how He meets our daily needs. In, in, the, in the Lord's Prayer, He says, Give us this day our daily bread. And when we say daily bread, is everything that is needed for today. The Father wants to provide his children. But when the children try to do it on their own, sometimes they get in trouble. They come out of the protection of being in Christ and they come out into the world and things in the world become attractive for a season and then bring sorrow to many who get to go after money. This is what um, Paul wrote to Timothy regarding believers who were chasing after money, not really trusting God for their daily needs. This is what he says, but godliness, godliness with contentment, I'm reading from 1 Timothy uh, 6 beginning on verse 6. Let me start again. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Chasing after money to get things of this world that also has a lot of temptations and that we will be not happy with, the enemy can use all of that to Really, like Paul says, uh, many have wandered from the faith and have pierced themselves with many griefs. It is uh, the, 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 what money brings and the joy and the pleasure that it brings is just temporary. It's just for a season. And then it goes away and you have to get more. And that's when the spirit of greed comes to uh, control you. Greed is a spirit from the enemy. And once you open yourself, once you come out from the protection of being in Christ, in the body, working with Him, being with Him, being what God has wants you to do, and you go after the attraction of money and the seduction of money and materialism, you are going to open themselves up for great problems. Um, I want to read what uh, Solomon had to say about desiring things, getting them, and what happened once he got it. And, and Solomon had everything he wanted. This is, this is what he, this is the testimony of Solomon regarding that, that spirit of greed, that spirit of desiring things of the world and obtaining the things that he wanted. Okay, it says here, I made my work, I'm reading from Ecclesiastes 2, beginning on verse 4. 
I made my works great. I built many houses and planted many vineyards. I made myself gardens and orchards and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. Solomon was always doing big, big things. I made myself water pools from which to water the growing trees of the grove. I acquired male and female servants and servants born in my house. I had greater processions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the special treasures of kings and of the provinces. He was a very rich man. Solomon was a rich man and he invested his money in acquiring more and more things. So I became great and excelled more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. Whatever my eyes desire, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. Everything that the world had to offer, Solomon went after it and he got it. He was rich. He was a, 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 a man with great wisdom that God had given him, but he used it in things that he should not have had. It says here, um, I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure, for my heart rejoiced in my labor. And this was my reward for all my labor. He rejoiced. He enjoyed. He enjoyed having all of this. But after that time of enjoyment was over, then what was next? And he began just to wonder, do I keep on getting more things and getting more things? Where is this all going to end? Then look at his final, this very wise man, what did at the end he discovered? Then I look on all the works that my hands had done, and on the labor in which I had toiled, and indeed all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. There will be no profit in the things of the world. There will be no profit in going after that spirit of greed and desire to own and to have things and to have money and possessions. There is no lasting, there is no lasting um, profit in any of that. The Lord Jesus gave us a warning. He said, invest your money in heaven. Let's see what he has to say. And um, we're looking at um, Matthew 6. Um, Matthew 6 and um, beginning on verse 19. But lay up, a, uh, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth. A big warning from the Lord. Where, you, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. You know the fear of people that have a lot of money or have possession. They're constantly trying to to protect them from people that will want to come and take it away from them. He goes on, But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Your treasure need to be invested in the things of God, in heaven. How can you invest in heaven? Is there a, a bank in heaven? Yes. There is eternal, an eternal bank that will produce eternal profit for those who invest. Invest in the things of God. Invest your time. Invest your work. Invest your money in the things that will bring a profit for the kingdom of God. Eternal lives being rescued from the kingdom of darkness and being brought to the kingdom of God. That, that is fruitful. That is a profit for the kingdom. And that's where your money, your effort, and your time should be invested. The Lord says, for where your treasure is, there your heart, heart will be also. If you invest in the things of God, that's where your heart is. Serving God. You being used by God, uh, your 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 money and the things that you have being invested for the kingdom, and then trusting God every day, like He says here, in in the Lord's prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Continue to trust God 
for your daily needs. There is, there was a young man who came to Jesus, wanting to join Jesus and, and be part of his group, of his uh, disciples. And Jesus looked at him and he, he saw his heart. Jesus saw his heart. This is what the, what the young man, the rich young man, came to ask Jesus. Good teacher, what things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now he understood that was, there was a life beyond what this material world, world was showing him. That he wanted to know how he could be in that eternal life forever. And the Lord said to him, well, do the commandments. Follow them, like Moses said. And, and he says, oh, all these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still what do I still lack? Now he was he he knew that there was something more than what he had been doing. So he was wondering, okay, Jesus, tell me what else? What else? I want I wanted to be sure. I want to I want to be sure that I will have eternal life. And Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect. Now the Lord was so kind and loving to him because he was so, he was seeing his heart. He said, if you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have, and give it to the poor. And you will have treasures in heaven. And come, follow me. Follow Jesus. Forsake all you have, and follow the Lord. Just do not trust this world system and the riches of the world to give you the protection and, and to satisfy all of your needs. You can have a lot of things, but at the end, it will not satisfy you. It will not be where God wants you to be. Working for Him, working for the kingdom, bringing fruits of eternal life in, for the kingdom. That is where we are. That is where our heart should be. And that is where our treasure should be. Thank you. Total trust on our part to know him, to depend on his what he gives us, and to thank him every day for our daily. Hello, welcome back. We are doing a study on spiritual warfare. In our last class, we were discussing the spirit of the world, the the things of the world that can come to captivate us and to seduce us away from our walk with the Lord. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that has to do also with the world and that is the spirit of greed, of money and trusting money needs, how he meets our daily needs. In, in the in the Lord's Prayer, He says, Give us this day our daily bread. And when we say daily bread, it's everything that is needed for today more than we trust sometimes God. The Lord Jesus said, You cannot serve God and money. They are opposites. They require different allegiance. And God demands,